What is up guys, it's your boy Swollam here, and back with another Classic WoW video specifically related to the Hardcore series coming out on Classic Era in just a couple of days. So with the upcoming launch of the Hardcore series, I want to talk about leveling on these servers and give a couple of advice I would say based on leveling and today we're talking about classes and whether you should level as a solo player, duo player or in a group. So for this we have made a tier list and I'll be splitting this into three separate categories. So basically we're ranking classes from solo to duo and then also putting them into whatever. So I'll be putting classes in into this tier list based on what I think you should level as, based on your class of choice. So for example, if a class is put into the solo category, I think that class is better for leveling as a solo setup, but if I'm putting it into duo, then I think it's much better to be in a duo, and if you're in the whatever, cate whatever category, then you can pretty much pick and choose, it doesn't really matter too much, and this is because some classes definitely benefit a lot more from being in a group, while some just benefit fit a lot more from being so low as well. It is worth noting that on hardcore servers, survival means absolutely everything, so if you don't think you can get to level 16 by yourself, then do consider grouping up in a duo or even trio, just leveling in a group, as that drastically increases your survival chance and increasing your chance of getting to level 60 as well. Just in the essence of being two people, if things get scary, you have someone that can either slow down the mob, stun the mob, take aggro off the mob, or simply heal you as well. So being in a duo, definitely very very helpful. Either way, let's get into the tier list and start ranking some classes. So the first one we can throw up into the solo category here is Hunters, and the main reason for this is that Hunters really do have pretty much everything you could ask for by themselves, except for maybe a healer, but then again you can heal your pet. So you have a pet that can tank mobs for you, you have increased movement speed as well, which makes it so that if you're teaming up with someone, you want to team up with someone who also has that increased movement speed. Like for example, Hunters and Druids works kind of well together, but even then, Hunters are just so fast by themselves, because when you're in a duo, you suddenly have to change up which quest you're doing, because doing a pickup quest where you pick up things on the ground, you're now two people instead of one so you have to find twice as many things, and quest where you're looting things from mobs as well, you have to loot twice as many things. So by being a hunter, you can do every single quest, you can both loot from the mobs, you can pick up from the ground, you have a tank at your side 24-7 through your pet, that doesn't really have a taunt, but it has a growl, which is kind of the same thing. It basically will hold aggro kind of well from you, and then if you ever get aggro, you can just kind to get the aggro back to the pet, or even this engage and stuff like that, right? Hunters are incredible for solo, and there's a reason why a lot of hunters do go solo, because once again, they're just fast, efficient, they're good at being solo, and they have a pet, so even when you're playing solo, it feels like you're playing in a duo environment. Now the next class to put into the solo category here is going to be the mage. This one could both be in a solo, duo or whatever, but I simply do think mages are a lot better by themselves, because once again they have the same thing as a hunter do, you can do all the quests, and you can AoE farm. You can also AoE farm by being in a duo, but the thing is, in most AoE farms out there you want to be by yourself, because that is how you maximize the amount of experience you get from those mobs, and when you're too people, sure, you can do those pulls a little bit easier and safer, but you get way less experience for it, and you will suddenly have to wait for mobs to spawn. Most main AoE farms out there are perfect for being solo, but they really do suck if you're in a duo. You could technically AoE farm inside dungeons like Sulfarak or stuff like that, but on hardcore servers, you only have one run per day of dungeons as well. So mages, I think they're just way better for solo, once again, especially if you're AoE farming, and I do think as a mage, you want to try to AoE farm in some, in some way. You don't technically have to AoE farm all the time, but you can try to target as many killing quests as possible and AoE farm those specific quests. So even if you're not just AoE farming, then do the quest you're supposed to do, but try to pull as many mobs as possible in that same pull. That is how you play the most efficiently as a mage anyway, but then again it can work as pretty much anything. But these are the two classes I do think benefit the, uh, like way more than anyone else from being 
solo. So let's talk about the duo, and here there's a couple of classes that really do benefit from being in a duo, and let's just start off with the kind of obvious one, the warrior. Warriors have always been the most difficult class to level up on hardcore in solo cell found, because by themselves, warriors aren't really that good while leveling. I mean, they can be. A warrior in the right hands can be very good, and when you get weapon upgrades, they're, they are also very good. You get hamstring kite, render kite, and stuff like that. But the thing is, by being in a group or being in a duo setup, warriors just get so much better very quickly. Having someone who can, for example, tank a mob for you, or heal you while you're tanking a mob, just means so much as a warrior. You also don't really have any stuns or any CC as a warrior, so it's like, if you're about to die, you're kinda, you're kinda like, just dead anyway. But if you have a mage, then suddenly that mage can slow down the mob. If you have a druid, for example, the druid can uh, put, uh, put thorns on you. So every time a mob deals damage to you, it also takes damage itself. Plus, anyone, if you're partying with a healer, like a shaman, druid, paladin, priest, they can heal you, and when you're a warrior, having a personal healer is so good. A warrior coupled with just about any healer out there in a duo setup is such an incredible duo. I think if I had to pick and choose, I would probably choose warrior plus druid or warrior plus paladin, but warrior plus shaman is also very good, and once again, warrior and priest also works as well, because once again, as long as you have a healer, it's just so good being a warrior. So the next one I'm going to talk about now is going to be the Paladin, and this one is because Paladins are very good at being solo as well. It's a very safe class to choose, but it's so slow. When you're leveling by yourself as a Paladin, it's such a slow class. It's pretty much the auto-attack machine, right? Because you're focusing a lot of your damage from auto-attacks, you're saving your mana to heal yourself, or even slow down the mobs and stuff like that. But when you're in a duo, paladins suddenly go from being one of the slowest classes to being one of the fastest classes, because not, not only can you heal other people, you can suddenly start dealing more damage by using your mana to deal damage, and you can buff yourself and buff your party members. If you want to tank, you can put salvation on your party members. If you have a caster as a party member, you can give them blessing of wisdom. If you have a warrior or a rogue, you can give them blessing of might or blessing of kings. It's just such a good class when you put it with someone else. Paladins, once again, by themselves are good as well, but it's just so slow. And when they're in a group, Paladins is just a class that's, that's made for being in a group. It buffs everyone around it, both in a party and a raid, and it's such a good class that just, yeah, once again, buffs everyone. Now, one class that I kinda wanted to put into solo, but I'm going to put into duo, is the Druid, and actually I'm going to put it in whatever, because this one can work as whatever. It's probably one of the safest classes to go for in solo as well, like for example, the one level 60, the first level 60, that I got on Classic Hardcore myself in solo self found was a Feral Druid, and that was my first time ever playing a Feral Druid. It is such a good class, even though it doesn't sound like a good class because it's a melee. If you're playing Feral, you're in melee, but you basically don't need a good weapon because weapon is just a stat stick. You can heal yourself, you can go for Omen of Clarity to proc free heals as well, and if things ever get sketchy, you have Soothe Animal for the Beast, or Hibernate I guess it's called, basically Sleeping Beast if you're fighting a beast, or you can Root as well. The only thing is, if you're in a cave, then just be aware that Roots do not work inside caves, but other than that, Feral Druids is a very good class. That being said, if you're in a duo, Druids can also be very good because you can, for example, be a hybrid Druid between both being Feral and Resto, or even just auto-attacking, and being Resto and fishing for Omen of Clarity casts, and using Omen of Clarity to heal your partner. For example, Druid and Warrior works really well, as the Druid can put thorns on the Warrior and even Mark of the Wild, and then also just help auto attack mobs down, you can use Moonfire for fast tanks, you can use Rejuvenation to heal over time, and you can fish with melee attacks for Omen of Clarity procs to then cast a big heal, like either Healing Touch or Regrowth. It's such a good class. 
Okay, so for the next four classes, it's going to be a bunch of whatever is here, but let's start with the priest, and this one is going to be in whatever, because priests really can level quite well on their own, and they can also be very good in very many, like, dual setups. Even mage and priest can work kinda well together, especially if you're focusing on single target. Hunter and priest can work because the priest can heal the hunter pet. Warrior and priest works because of what I just said, where warrior works with every single healer in the game. And and yeah, Priest pretty much works with just about everything in the game, because any DPS coupled with the healer increases your survival, which then makes you better for hardcore. The next one that I also want to put into whatever is going to be the rogue, and that is because once again rogues really can be very good on their own. It is a melee class, so it's worth noting that once again it's a melee class, so you will take a little bit more damage, but they simply have so many abilities in their toolkit that they can take advantage of to solo just about everything out there. You can, for example, Blade Flurry off a level 44 mob to a level 48 mob, and that will then make it so all your attacks hit that mob, even though if you were supposed to only attack the high level mob, you would then miss, he would parry and stuff like that, but it's such a good class. You even have Sap, a Blind Kidney, is it called Kidney? I haven't played a rogue in such a long time in Classic Wild Dude, but it's such a good class when it comes to hardcore. I, I started a leveling one recently on hardcore, and even in low levels, it really feels great because you get access to so many of those key abilities early in your leveling stage. You even get stuff like evasion very early, you get stealth and sprint. Once again, very good class. So with that said, there's only really two more classes to go through, one of which is the one I'm going to play, so let's start with that one, that is the Warlock. Once again, gonna put this one in whatever right here, because it can work really well by being a solo, but it also works really well in being a duo, and the thing is, Warlocks you can duo with so many random classes, and it simply works out. For example, Double Warlock can actually work, you also have Warlock and Mage, where the Mage can then slow down mobs around the Warlock, or even just like the mage AoE farming and the warlock also AoE farming through either hellfires, although you probably want to stay away from hellfire on hardcore. You have rain of fire, you have corruption, damage over times, and stuff like that. And you even have, for example, warlock and rogue. This is a duo that doesn't really sound like it works, but it really, really works. For example, from level 1 to level 10, Warlocks are kinda slow, or level 1 to level 20, Warlocks are kinda slow, but Rogues are kinda fast, and Warlocks also lack a way to tag mobs fast, but Rogues have access to a fast weapon in which they can tag with. You also have the fact that Rogues can, for example, crippling poisons to slow down mobs that the Warlock is then kiting around, so as a Warlock you can simply run around, throw damage over time on just about everything, and then the Rogue stuns and slows those mobs down, and you also have access to two DPSers, one being melee, melee, other being ranged, and you have a demon. The demon can be whatever you want the demon to be, you for example have Succubus or the Imp, but you also have the Voidwalker, so you can have a personal tank. Now for the last one, the Shaman, I'm gonna put this one in duo, simply because when you're leveling as a Shaman, you feel very strong from level 1 to level 20, maybe even level 30, but at some point, Shamans do hit a massive wall and they are just so good in groups. It's the same thing as a paladin, where paladins can be good on their own, but they're made for group utility. Paladins bring blessings, like shamans bring totems. Now, those totems will benefit you as an individual person, but they will benefit even more in a group, because once again, the totems don't just affect you, they affect everyone in your party. So shamans, I really really would be in a duo. You could argue that you can solo from level 1 to level 10, or level 1 to level 20, and then in duo at a later stage, but for now this is roughly what my tier list would look like based on which classes should solo, duo, or pretty much pick and choose. Once again, let me know how wrong I am on this in the comments down below, and if you haven't checked it out already, please consider checking out my classic WoW gold making guide as well, which is currently 130 four pages long covering the best gold farms in the game and the best investments like for example how I turned a thousand gold into 20,000 gold in Season of Mastery. So if you're looking to do the same or just make a bunch of gold on the hardcore servers, 
this is definitely the guide for you, and the link to that one is down below. Once again, let me know if I made any mistakes in this video in the comments down below, leave a like on the video just before you leave, and subscribe to the channel for more hardcore content. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you again very soon.